Oh yeah. In this video, we get this bay knocked out. Let's get into it. I cannot wait to show you the entire process as well as the end result. Cause it's gonna be good. And now, you're watching the paint job looking so wet it makes you want to spell tuna sub backwards. Channel of YouTube, welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So we want to keep working on the hatch. We did a lot in the last video, but we still have a lot to get done before we can do that base coat and clear coat. And if I want to get this thing done in a reasonable amount of time, we have to get into it relatively quickly. So what I need to focus on right now is we did all the welding and all of the grinding in the last video. Now it is time to move into body filler. I'm going to work in some separate zones. I'm going to spread, mix over here, spread, mix over there, spread, mix over there, then I can come back Back to the first area and start sanding just working around the entire car until eventually there is no more need to fill anything out and there's no need to sand anything out and of course i will give you some tips and tricks along the way to help you with your project if that's something that you're into or not either way Alright, so at this point, now that I've been sanding for uh, 30 days and 30 nights, it uh, you know hurts your knuckles, your fingernails get worn down. It's a, it's a lot to sand body filler like this and all these crevices and make sure you feather out all the edges. That's really what takes the most amount of time. So let's go ahead and get this thing masked off. I want to make sure the paint is protected, especially because... Uh, I'm the one that painted it. I don't want to have to paint it again here. So what I'm going for right now is more of an initial primer. This initial primer is going to cover everywhere that I either metal worked or anywhere that has body filler. This isn't going to be a full coverage coat because there's no reason to get primer on like bare paint multiple times. So this is just going to help me fill in all the areas. It's going to help me recalibrate to see where I'm at, to see how much more sanding I need to do. This is kind of just like a reset doing this initial primer. So let's get the car masked off. Should be pretty quick and easy with this big roll of plastic. And then we will get some primer mixed up and then see where we're at. I know for sure I'm gonna have a lot more work to do, but it's going to be a lot easier to find it once we have decent coverage with primer. Right now, it's hard for your eyes to find the troubled areas. So we wanna find and highlight the troubled areas by priming this. All right, so at this point, we got the primer down. Now, let me actually show you what's going on with this. Now, I know on that time lapse, it looked really good, but let me give you a little bit more detail on why and how this is going to really humble us. So if you can see right here, we still have a lot of problematic areas. You can see some really deep sanding scratches. 
overall it just does not look really solid it needs a lot of attention you can see little grooves in there little gouges but that's exactly what i expected and exactly why i wanted to prime this now it is going to actually be a lot easier to sand down some of those messed up areas now that they have a primer over them because the filler primer is pretty easy to sand so if we have metal and then body filler and then it's smoothed over with primer that primer might reflect the lower surface but by the time you knock off that inconsistency you'll be in really good shape so what are Got right here this is just some 220 i actually ran out of the 224 my little da i might get some more of that or i might just do some stuff by hand but really with sanding this being such a tight area it is a pain like a hood you can just go to town with your da sand it all down this is really more sand what you can with the da and bust your knuckles for the rest of the time so let's go ahead sand this down since we gave this a good amount of time to dry and eventually we can prime this thing again the main purpose of the primer for us is to be used as a tool for us to see when we are ready to go on to that next step you don't just have to do primer then base coat then clear coat you can prime it sand it prime it sand it as many times as you like until you're happy with it then you can move on to that base coat and clear coat once you're completely satisfied with the surface so at this point it is actually a few days later and i figured i would spare you some time because i don't know how much footage of me just sanding and 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 sanding that you guys want me to show you because in reality that's all that i've been doing now on this primer what i've been using was actually right here just a little bit of 220 i jumped it up 180 is what i sanded the filler with now i'm using a 220 to sand the actual primer and i'm just in here by hand working out all of these areas now one thing that's good about the primer is you can watch the primer itself in order to kind of see what you still need to sand and what i mean by that is the primer is kind of dark before you sand it so if you're rubbing over an area anywhere that's been sanded is going to be lighter but all of the lower areas are going to still be darker or anywhere that the sandpaper hasn't touched so if you see that you start off and you have some darker divots you need to keep sanding until you get all of those divots out of there in order for you to be for sure that the surface is going to be nice and smooth so i think what i'm going to do now is we need to go for probably a full primer but before i do a full primer i'm going to want to mask off the firewall in its entirety so that way i don't get any overspray inside the vehicle since i wasn't doing a full primer before I wasn't going near any of the holes maybe I could have masked them off before and that would have saved me a little bit of time right now but either way in the end it's about the same so I think right now it's looking pretty good so let's go ahead and go for that next primer the key for me is to prime as many times the key for me is to prime as many times as you need because every time you prime it is going to become smoother and smoother and smoother and then after that I can sand down the primer again see if I'm happy with it or not. The primer as it goes down wet is going to be a good representation of how the base coat and clear coat is going to be. So if the primer goes down and you see a bunch of scratches through the primer, you need to sand that smooth. But if the primer goes down and it looks really good, then you can just pretty much be ready to go for base coat right after that, after you sand it down with maybe a 400 grit or so. Maybe even a 320 would be fine. So overall, it's looking really good. And we're moving right along. So as you're masking off the firewall, here's a pretty cool trick for you. These holes, you don't want to tape the outer edge because you want to get paint everywhere. And the inner edge, a lot of times, is full of dirt and grime and grease because it's an older vehicle. So if you go to the dollar store, go ahead and grab you some balloons, an assortment pack with different sizes. You can blow them up and then just shove them. Shove them in the hole. They're nice and snug. No overspray is going to get in there and you can blow them up accordingly to what size you need. And that, the little nipple action right there, that works pretty good. Let me move this one a little bit more. 
So just like that, we got all of those knocked out. Now we don't have to worry about overspray getting on the inside of the car. Now, if you have a full carpet and dash, it's not the worst case scenario if you get a little bit of overspray in there because it'll probably just stop over here. But with this interior being fully painted, I don't want to get any overspray in there. So. I think we were looking pretty good to lay another coat of primer on here. And that primer will kind of show us where we're at if we are ready to move forward to that base coat and eventually clear coat. Because we want to make sure this thing is good before we move forward. Even though it takes a few extra days to sand all of this stuff down, you're going to be thankful in the end that you took the extra time. All right, so I think right about now we are getting to the uh, you know the time that we've all been waiting for. It's time to get that base coat mixed all up and then spray it out and then do the clear coat and then we're gonna see the final product of this thing. Now, the color that this engine bay is going to be is the exact same color code as the exterior of the car, which is just Honda Roma Red. A lot of people think it's Milano Red. Milano, I believe, is a little bit newer and since this car is a 96, it would have been Roma. I think Milano Red is like a 99, 2000 color, but don't quote me on that. I'm not a color thesaurus. So here we go. Honda Aroma Red. I mix this at a two to one mix ratio. That's just because that's what my paint called for for me to do. Two parts paint, one part reducer, which is the two to one. So I just got this sitting here ready to go. And I know for sure this is going to match with the exterior of the car because it's the same color that I painted before. So I'm not worried about that whatsoever. Also an engine bay is pretty forgiving because you don't have a panel on top of a panel. So it's, you know, pretty easy going as far as color matching an engine bay. Where I've seen people get into issues is like if their car was championship white and then they went with like a taffeta white engine bay, that's not going to be good because it's two different shades of white. The championship white is going to be a lot more creamy looking. The taffeta is more of a paper white. So just get the same color and you'll be fine. If you were going for something different, I'd recommend doing something completely different, like do a black with a blue or a green or something wild. But I really like the bay being the same color as the car with a nice clear coat on it. I think it looks nice, mature, real proper. I think the wild engine bays. They're cool, don't get me wrong. It just depends on what you're going for with your vehicle. So we got this mixed up and ready to go. I'm going to be spraying with my DeVilvis DV1 and I'm going to be spraying at about 13 PSI. And one thing that I always like to stress whenever I'm doing videos on engine bays is you've got to dial your gun however you're painting. For example, you don't need a 12 inch spray fan if you're getting in right here. So I like to bring that spray fan way down, turn my pressure down so that way I can really get this backside. This backside of the shock tower is the number one most missed place when people are doing engine bays because because it's hard to get in there. So you gotta be back here, snipe it. Dial down your gun, get the paint all over here, looking really good, and you'll be in good shape. So I'm gonna wipe it down one more time, and then we're gonna go for this base coat, man. This is what we've been waiting for, and I'm hyped to lay it down.
have that first coat of base coat down. Now I just wanted to talk to you really quickly about some of my mindset as I'm doing an engine bay. So for the first coat, my goal is I'm just going for full coverage. Every single nook and cranny I want to get paint in around the corners, underneath, around the side. I just want to get paint absolutely everywhere. So by doing that, that's not going to leave your smoothest coat because you're going to have wet edges landing on edges that might have dried already. So it's not going to be perfectly consistent. But on the second coat, my mindset is a little bit different. All I want to do with my second coat, since I know I pretty much have paint everywhere, I just want to put a nice sheet of paint over the entire thing. Firewall, passenger side, driver side, radiator support, and then get out of there. So that way my surface is as consistent as possible for their clear coat to go on there. Also, another thing that I wanted to mention about doing engine bays. Engine bays are pretty easy to paint just because they will look good by the time you have 100 plus components going back in here. The motor, the transmission, all the axles, the brackets, the bolts, this and that. It's going to hide all of the imperfections pretty, pretty heavily. So I'm gonna give it a minute here, then I will do that second coat of base with the exact mindset that I was just telling you about. And then after that, that clear coat on top of this is gonna set it off. At this point we have the base coat completely done I'm really happy with everything it showed me how good and or not good I did all of my body work so like I said for what we are going for I am really happy with it now we are about to do that clear coat I wanted to give it a lot of time to completely flash off you know that it's flashed off and done drying when you don't see any kinds of sheen you want it to look like a semi gloss if it's still wet give it a little bit more time and it doesn't hurt to give it more time than necessary so I just kind of take a little break clean out the paint gun and now we are going to go for that clear coat I cannot wait to shell this in with clear coat I know it's gonna look awesome Really quickly before I show you the engine bay, I wanted to fill you in on something that you are going to be extremely excited about and I wanted to give you first chance and first opportunity to go ahead and take advantage of this. So right now I am officially launching the giveaway of my 1988 LS1 swapped. Honda Accord. This thing is rear-wheel drive, T56, Holley Terminator, the works. This car is awesome. Every time I take this thing to a show, it is a show stopper. Everybody loves this car. Whether you like Hondas or hate Hondas, nobody hates this thing. I mean, how could you not like it? V8, rear-wheel drive, 1988 Honda Accord hatch. I painted the entire thing from top to bottom. I did all the custom fabrication. This vehicle is awesome and it could be yours. So if you want to take advantage of this and you want the LS swapped Honda Accord to be in your driveway, go ahead and click the link in the description down below. Every one purchase of a key tag is equivalent to one entry. You can enter as many times as you would like. There is also a no purchase necessary option as well. Go ahead and read all the details down there on that. And also I'm going to be working on that car up in the next few video so you can see a lot more on it if you want to check it out and I have a full playlist of the build that I would like to invite you to check out as well if you might be interested so now let's take a look at this engine bay dude because this thing turned out phenomenal and good luck on winning the LS swapped Honda Accord I would go ahead and get your entry in there because I have a feeling it is not going to last long
do you see how absolutely awesome this thing turned out? I mean, dude, I could not be more excited. It looks phenomenal. The clear coat laid out like glass, the shaving, the bodywork. It is everything that I could have ever hoped for for this engine bay to turn out. For the few days that I spent on it, 100% extremely satisfied with it. You gotta let me know what you think, man. I want the comment section to blow up on this thing. I don't like to be cocky about my work, but this thing 100% turned out phenomenal. If you ever have the opportunity to see this thing in person, you better take advantage of it because in person, it looks, I mean, it looks like it's soaking wet, dripping with paint. Well, no drips. I'm just really excited about it, man. So the next thing that I wanna do, the little outer area, like the wheel well, I like this to be the line of transition because this is actually underneath the fender. So I like black rock guard to go all in the wheel well to come up to this line. So I'm going to go ahead and go for that. It's raining and I'm going to give it some time. So I'm going to knock out some of that stuff in the next video, as well as getting the subframe all cleaned up and painted and getting that back in the car and ultimately getting this thing buttoned up for Kyle to pick it up. So since it's getting real loud, the rain's coming down. I'm going to give this plenty of time to dry and I will see you on the next one. Click the link down below. Good luck on entering to win the LS Swap Honda Accord and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.